Jack and Daxter The Precursor Legacy was Naughty Dog's first outing for the PlayStation 2 after they became a first party developer to Sony. And with its seamless open world and colourful environments, its critical and commercial success matched with other stellar titles released for the PS2 in 2001. But when the sequel came out in 2003, it almost completely changed everything. The tropical island was replaced with a dystopian city, there were guns, more dark eco, and even coarse language. Remind me not to piss you off! The only thing that was similar was the returning characters and the way Jack moves. But whether or not it was ruined depends on your idea of a challenge, because it's as brutal as a Mortal Kombat fatality. It was successful enough for Sony to greenlight another sequel, and was released on November 2004, just a week after Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal. of the Grand Council of Haven City for heinous acts and crimes against the people. Set a year after the events of Jack 2, Jack is sent into exile by Count Vega after previous actions despite, you know, being the hero. And because his dark eco powers are considered a serious threat. But Ashlyn calling it BS, secretly gives Jack a tracking beacon and Daxter and Pekka follow suit. They wander the desert throwing shots at each other until they collapse from exhaustion. They're eventually saved by desert dwellers and are tested for their abilities in a gladiator fight. Well, Jack is. Daxter is only on his shoulder, and Pekka becomes a servant to their King Damos. You two are likely to die in the arena today. And he hopes your death is very... Uh... Will you stop that? Damos can talk for himself! But after Jack proves his usefulness, the two become citizens of Sparga City. They find precursor technology being discovered and crash landing all over the desert. The precursor monks in particular predict an upcoming apocalypse. It will destroy you, just as these precursors destroyed themselves. It doesn't look like any precursor crap we've seen. Meanwhile, back in Haven City, there's a civil war ongoing, linking to the world ending foul play. With Dark Eco becoming more powerful than ever, it is up to Jack and Daxter to put an end to this devastation. Oh yeah! The boys are back in town! Let's go topside and see what kind of trouble we can get into. Jack is now a hardcore warrior. Remember when he was a mute in the Precursor Legacy? I don't. You talking to me? Yeah! You talking to... him? Light Eco from the first game plays a heavier role in Jack 3, and once Jack gains it, he becomes less angry. It's exactly what he needs, because how would you feel if you were kicked out of a city for trying to save it? The Dark Eco, it feels far away. I feel better. As for Daxter, he provides the usual comic relief that can be annoying sometimes, but he's definitely funnier than he was in the Precursor Legacy. Damn straight! Would it be too much to ask for a foot rub? <sighs> nope, didn't think so. I know I sound like I'm rushing through my thoughts of the characters, but the only real change is Jack being less angry. Otherwise, you have the same characters with a couple of new ones, so there isn't much to talk about. I recommend playing the first two games to understand everything, just because the intro is essentially screaming at you to do just that. I can't believe this city hates us. We saved those lowlifes! The story is one of the trilogy's biggest strengths, particularly when the teleportation into Haven City occurs and it reaches its peak in Jack 3. Being aimed mostly at teenagers growing up after their Crash Bandicoot years, it's dark, imaginative, and gritty without necessarily taking things too far. What are you doing to my place? We needed a Southern HQ for the war. Plus, I kind of like the sign with the Ocelot outside. Yeah, it's cool, huh? We use it for target practice. Hey! And because Naughty Dog developed this, that's how it looks. It's one of the best looking games on the PlayStation 2. Although Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, which came out a couple of weeks before Jack 3, made us think, how is this even possible in a video game, let alone on a PlayStation 2? It has a bigger map and more things to do. Jack 3 looks like it capitalizes on the high production value better than San Andreas. There are almost no graphical glitches, and if there are, they're only set on command. It has a new map almost the same size as Haven City, along with having at least three quarters of Haven City in the game as well, and it's still looking like it almost belongs on a PlayStation 3, not just because that's the version we're looking at. Okay, that might be a stretch, but my point is that what you see takes talent to develop. This place looks as bad as my old bedroom back home. And Naughty Dog had it. Fun fact, all the creators of every single Naughty Dog franchise, even before the PlayStation years, have a major role in Jack 3. Last of Us and Uncharted 4 directors Bruce Straley and Neil Druckmann work as an artist and programmer. Amy Hennig, the director of the first three Uncharted games in Jack X Combat Racing, works as a designer. And of course, the Crash Bandicoot and Jack and Daxter creators Andy Gavin and Jason Rubin work as director, writer, and head programmer respectively. Just imagine what they could do if they all decide to work on a new Naughty Dog IP together after The Last of Us reaches its conclusion. Fortunately, Jack 3 is a perfect example. 
Hang on, Dax. It's gonna be close. It sticks with a mature tone, maybe more so than Jack 2. It kind of reminds me of Mad Max. However, despite the open world setting, it's a lot more linear. Like the first half of the game, you don't even get to choose which mission to enter. Imagine a GTA game. The letters represent the marker location and the beginning of a mission. Well, it's basically one letter on the map the whole time. There'll be a few occasions where you'll have more than one choice, but you'll be spending most of your time going from point A to B. Isn't it time for you ankle biters naps? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Spargo City is a town in the middle of the desert with even less to do, just a few gladiator events and defensive turret work. The real action happens on the wastelands. Metalheads will arrive in infinite numbers, but don't worry, actually hang on, that creates a serious plot hole. When Jack was exiled at the beginning, at the same desert, wouldn't Jack, Daxter and Pekka get torn apart by the metalheads? Because whenever you exit Spargo City, you're immediately ambushed by these guys. It's not like he had his morph gun to defend himself. Let's go with him! We'll help together! You mean we'll die together? Anyway, metalheads will attack you all the time if you wander through the desert wastelands. But don't worry, your buggy is locked and loaded. Nice rides. You like what you see? We use these babies to make runs into the deep desert to retrieve artifacts. Tough wheels for tough work. Each one has a unique function that is mandatory for a particular mission. All of them are prone to rolling, but they take more damage than a Zuma, and the ammo of a weapon attachment is infinite. There are also car based races, which I assume were a tease of the upcoming Jack X Combat Racing. It's about time they got the vehicles right, control wise at least. As we saw at the beginning, Haven City is a trail of destruction, but from a gameplay perspective, it's a relief. Say you take a Zuma, the enemies are on the ground, some shoot at you, but not towards you, and the traffic is almost non-existent. That makes the city easier to navigate, and making the drawbacks of a Zuma, being made of glass and steering like they're on ice, pretty much irrelevant, because all the vehicle-based missions involve the off-road buggies I mentioned earlier, and they control just fine. Once again, the missions begin after going into the outskirts, caves, or buildings. Some parts actually require you to use the eco powers. Probably a good thing because when it comes to fighting enemies, the morph gun is the only useful means of attack. You can even make the argument that shooter is the primary genre of Jack 2 and 3, and platforming comes second. With the exception of the tutorial, it takes nearly an hour just to reach a mission where you need to do some serious platforming. Anyone can make a few measly jumps. Jack controls exactly the same. He can punch, spin attack, jump, roll, and has extra moves when dark or like eco powers are activated. It also has the same dodgy camera. What is it with it getting stuck and having a mind of its own? You'll be hit by an enemy you can't even see, so you have to keep looking at your map and shoot blindly. The morph gun can change into a scatter, blaster rifle, Vulcan barrel and peacemaker, just like Jack 2. Only this time, special upgrades can be earned on specific missions. While nowhere near as diverse as Ratchet and Clank, they get the job done even if you have almost no control of the camera. Overall, Jack 3 moves and shoots pretty well, but I know this is the third time I've mentioned it, that it's really frustrating not having enough control of that camera. You can't move up, down or straight, and it stops if part of the level is in the way. Why is it too much to rectify? Sometimes you face your enemy head on, and sometimes you wait until his weakness is revealed. Patience is a warrior's greatest weapon. Do you understand? However, all is forgiven because at least they rectified the difficulty. It's finally considered tolerable enough for me to enjoy the whole thing. Jack 2 was a constant uphill battle beyond the likes I've never experienced in a 3D platformer. I'm not saying it's the hardest, but it completely caught me off guard. It has way too many missions with short time limits, enemies on screen, and the worst defender, not enough checkpoints. You might as well have none. Please Jack, you're such a wimp. I could have taken it myself. It's the main reason why Daxter opening his mouth, taunting you after you run out of health is absolutely stupid and uncalled for. Because all you're doing is increasing the worldwide rate of broken PlayStation controllers. Cut! Where's the director? I can't work like this. Fortunately, he didn't do that in Jack 2, because if he did, you wouldn't be watching my review of Jack 3 right now. I would refuse to go near a Jack and Daxter game ever again. Keep yapping, Jelly Boy. We'll see who- Bite your bum, rat face, or I'll pound ya. Oh! Great stink of the precursors! I got two words for you. 
toothbrush. But things are different in Jack 3. There are more checkpoints, armor upgrades equal increased health, enemies can drop health when you kill them, weapon upgrades can be used regularly, and most missions don't have a time limit, and when they do, there's an actual window of opportunity. Only when you reach the final hour of the game does it become psychotic with its difficulty. The part where you have to defend Sparga City with the turret is nearly as punishing as that eco tanker mission, but it makes a lot more sense because you've learned the controls, have all the power ups and upgrades making you ready for the upcoming challenge. The actual difficulty curve is set just right, but it's still out to get you. The only downside is that it doesn't take as long to beat. Even despite the map sizes, I only needed around 8 hours to complete it. Difficulty is a very hard thing to critique, no pun intended, because it mostly comes down to your ideals of a challenge and balancing it with total gameplay time. This probably explains why Jack 2 was so hard, because if it had the kind of difficulty that Precursor Legacy and 3 have, it would shave so much of the gameplay time. At the very least, there should be a difficulty option so there's something for everybody. I know I said before that it's more linear, but there are things to do for 100% bragging rights. I ignore them, but there are 600 precursor orbs scattered over both maps and can be earned from searches in aforementioned races. Oh, and if you have the PlayStation 3 remaster, there are also trophies. Personally, I like Jack 3 more than the second, just because of the difficulty. Think of it as Jack 2, with less traffic in Haven City, upgrades to weapons and health, one or two extra checkpoints during missions, and another map, while implementing all the positives, the production value, the size of the cities, the deserts, the variety, solid controls, and gritty storyline, all combining into one badass conclusion. Jack and Daxter is a proven series that paved the way for not just mature settings, but in-depth storytelling in future Naughty Dog games, but it would be at the expense of Jack and Daxter itself. There was a PSP spin-off called The Lost Frontier, and Naughty Dog tried to develop an early PlayStation 3 title, but progress was slow due to system complications and scrapped everything. The success of the Uncharted series allowed the team to split up to create another game, with Bruce Straley and Neil Druckmann directing. They considered a Jack and Daxter return, but decided to do their own IP instead. Definitely the right choice. It's clear that Jack and Daxter isn't a priority to Naughty Dog these days. Besides, The Last of Us Part 2 is the only thing we should be thinking about. Thing is, Sony recently confirmed a PlayStation 4 release of the trilogy including Jack X Combat Racing. Insomniac Games successfully rebooted Ratchet and Clank back in 2016, and the Uncharted series is reaching its conclusion. But, I wouldn't hold my breath.